Hi and welcome back. This is uh, it's quite exciting. I've had a delivery. So these should be all the main parts for the address registers. I think I've got uh, enough for six or seven of them here. So these are resistors. These are surface mount. And they're uh, 1206 devices, which is pretty small. I've um, I've seen people hand solder uh, much smaller ones, but I am pretty inexperienced with the surface mount soldering, having uh, only done one chip before now, so I don't want to be too bold. But yeah, okay. So these these are the count chips. Wow, they're small. Okay, I don't know if uh, you can see that, but um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm actually a little bit nervous about that. It's uh, it's going to be some fairly fine soldering, but I'm willing to give it a go. Okay, what else have we got here? Um, so we've got various uh, different color LEDs. I think I'm uh, actually only going to be using two colours of LED on this particular circuit, but um, I've bought a few different ones also in 206. What's that? Oh, that is a 25.175 megahertz crystal. Um, it's a spoiler for a future video. Okay. Um, and. This is the latch chips. So these are SO20 and these are SO16. But with the dip packages, the higher numbers usually just just mean it gets longer. But um, but these are actually quite a bit larger on all dimensions. So yeah, that's going to be interesting when we come to lay out the circuit, which is the process I'm starting today. Now I'm going to be honest, I've been practicing a little bit on the circuit layout software and when I say practice I mean I've made a few stabs at it and then kind of thrown my work away because it all went horribly wrong but um, yesterday I actually got all the way through so I recorded that process and I've edited the, the, the whole design process which is uh, what you're going to see. If you watch carefully, I do make one particular mistake on one of the control lines, which I don't notice till the very end, so uh, watch out for that. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's edit that in now. Okay, so the main buses, I'd like to uh, have one of these 2x17 headers. Now this gives me a couple of advantages. Firstly, it's got enough connectors for the address and the inter-register transfer bus, plus power and ground, which I'm going to stick in the middle. And then, so the, these are basically all the main lines that are common. And while I'm working on the CPU, I'm thinking I can make an easy backplane that will connect all of these up together which means I've only got the, the control lines that I have to worry about doing separate hookups for. It doesn't make a great deal of difference once we switch to um, a final backplane PCB, but that's uh, a little way off at the moment. Okay, so then I'm gonna use one of these little eight pin headers for connecting the control signals. Now one of the things I have learned in my experiments is that uh, trying to wire everything up individually is a bit of a mug's game. Um, I'll give you an example of that. If I were to say come along and do this, it's, this wire is going to form connections to everything it crosses by, which is not a big problem when you're doing a few wires 
But once you're trying to do an awful lot of interconnects between chips, then that actually gets really quite difficult. So I have found this net label facility, which I think is going to make life a lot easier for us. then it should be a fairly simple matter of connecting all these wires across. Then I can drop down one of these ports elsewhere with the same name and effectively remote reference it. It's kind of logical and I should have expected there to be a facility along these lines because it's, uh, it's obviously the kind of thing we, uh, we do in software all the time. The whole point of this project for me is to, uh, is to learn some of this interesting electronic stuff. Now what I'm hoping is of course that there is going to be um, some nice way of copy pasting these when done because then I'm going to be able to uh, hook up large amounts of the back plane with just placing these down. Not necessarily going to help me during uh, the, the routing of the, the cables. Okay. I don't know if there's any benefit for me uh, putting these down in order like this, but it's not that big a stress. Now this set of 16 wires is the address bus. I've got a suspicion there's probably a better way of doing this as well, but this is working. Okay, that's good. Okay, now this little section here is effectively, well, it's almost done. I think, I think I will put the larger capacitor in here while I'm here. Okay, now the clear line is where we're going to actually uh, be hooking up the reset, but I, rather than call that reset, I think call it clear just in case we uh, maybe use the model in a module in a future project. Okay, next up we are going to need our uh, HCT 193s. Now I had to actually, um, I had to put these in myself by, uh, there was an, a pre-existing 193 chip and I changed the, uh, the, the title and the, the package on it, which I'm hoping I've got right. Okay, I may end up needing a bit more space between these chips than I've given myself, but I'm going to save it and confirm that these wires are hooking up the way I think they are. Okay.
Okay, that was unexpected, but I think we've dealt with that. Okay, that's hooking up exactly the way we, we would like to see it do that. That's cool. Now, we realise that these are all the wrong way around. Probably going to be easy to just rename these. Now I've turned these around because I've I want this one to be the low order bits and I want things to go from a least significant bit on the right because it's just going to be a, a lot easier if uh, we think about it in those terms. Okay, let's ink. Dave on EV blog would say this is a trap for young players when I rotate these objects the wires stay where they are but they lose their connections but I also think I need more room for this right now these QA, QB, QC, QD those are the the output bits. I think what I want is I want to create a Nava set of network labels, which are uh, are going to be for that. Okay, I quite like the way that I can uh, visually match the pattern here, here, here and here because then that gives me a reasonable degree of confidence I've uh, connected it all up nicely. Okay, now these A, B, C and D are the inputs to these count registers and they need to be connected to the bus. Okay, I can do these vertically, that might help. Let's stick with doing them horizontally. Okay, that's good. So this is all of our logic that actually implements the counting. We've got the main controls for loading the contents of the register from the, the bus. And we've got the clear option, increment, decrement, borrow, carry. We're going to have to add the LED indicators for all of these. We're going to have to add the LED indicators for all of the main registers as well 
Now, I do want to put in a capacitor for each chip. Let's actually finish this before we call it done. Okay, things are starting to get pretty tight in here now. So I'm pleased these are the last wires I've got to add to this particular section. Okay, I don't like that. Okay, so these are your basic uh, power decoupling designed to keep the high frequency switching off the, uh, the power rail. And this is a larger capacitor that I'm putting across the main power inputs, which uh, just uh, isolates the power here from the uh, any other modules. Okay, so next up we need the, the bus assert pairs. Now, is there a way to copy? Ah, yes, awesome. Okay, so that's oh, going to be great. I'm missing an input line here. Okay, and of course the circuitry to assert to the bus that we've built here is pretty much an exact copy of what we need to assert to the address bus. Okay, now we need a bunch of LEDs. Okay, I want to double space these. How am I going to do this neatly? Double spacing 16 of these means I need 15 spaces. Bingo. Okay, so that's our 16 main indicator LEDs. Now, we do have a number of control lines I'd like to uh, output as well. Let's have a think. We don't want to display clock on every circuit. I'm not sure if we want to output 
actually put LEDs out for carry and borrow. They're going to be very, very rare, and I don't actually have much use for those lines at the moment so it's unclear that's tricky if um if i ever use these 16-bit count registers in a diff circuit i might want to actually use the clear directly but we are only going to in the current design for the 8-bit cpu use that as a reset and I'm not sure if it's particularly productive for us to just have reset light appear all over the circuit board. So I think I'm going to skip that as well. So it's, uh, let's just grab these. So we don't want clear, assert to bus, assert to address bus, load, increment, deck. Those five we'd like. Okay, so. Right, well, we haven't done a good job of that. Okay, yeah, no, these are going to be quite a bit different anyway. Let's get the spacing right. Now, all of these are, as signals, are actually active low. So they actually need to go to the five volt rail with the LEDs the opposite way around. Okay, even now these uh, wiring tools are starting to make a little bit more sense. Okay, let's save that. Now how do we change the size of that? Okay, so let's explore this. So these are going to be our two connectors that we're going to place on the circuit board. I'm going to stick this along the bottom and then this so horizontally and this vertically along the right hand side. These are our two sets of bus driving, one for the bus one for the address bus then these are the core count chips which are going to actually store our value and that will be outputting that onto the register lines we've got a set of leds hooked up the register lines input to our bus drivers and as long as i haven't done anything crazy like got the inputs and outputs of these chips the wrong way around i think we're uh, we're good okay i do feel i need to sanity check this a little bit more Oh, that's wrong. The entire point of having two sets of these is we've got uh, two different buses. One that we can copy data between the registers with and at the same time output one of the registers onto the address bus. So that needs a separate assert line. We only have one load line because we can only load from the main 16-bit bus. Okay. Right, um, I actually think that uh, this design is about done. Okay, well, hopefully um, you've just watched that and uh, it was interesting. I don't know how far I'll go with the schematic design process for the remaining modules. If you comment that you liked it and would like to see more of them, then uh, I'll, I'll do that. If not, I might uh, do a far more edited down version for the other sections. I think for the most part, we discuss most of the workings on the, on the breadboard, which is a more interesting place to do it. But for the next video on the address registers, I'll be actually doing the PCB layout, which I'm hoping won't take me quite as much practice as the schematic layout took, but uh, we'll see. But thanks for watching. Goodbye.